This is my third and final lecture on the King's Indian Defense. The King's Indian Defense starts off by d4, knight f6, c4, g3. And then normally we've continued a line that starts with um, knight to c3, preparing the move e4. But uh, in the um, Pinanchetto variation, um, white plans on developing the bishop to um, g, g2 after moving, making the move g3. And what this will do is that um, it will lend support to uh, defense of the king and also help control um, these squares, especially the two central squares, e4 and d5. So it's a strategically different type of game. It has a different nature than the other variations we've looked at. So let's see how this game would normally continue. So instead of playing knight c3, which white will usually end up playing knight c3, but here it wants to um, financhetto the bishop and get its king castled, so it's going to play knight to um, f3, which, you know, natural developing square, and also helps stop uh, Black from playing e5 if desired. Then black will continue with its normal plan of playing bishop to g7 and castling on the king side. Then white will play g3, preparing its plan. Black will castle. White will play bishop to g2. Um, black will play d6, which we've seen in other games. You know, if white ends up getting e4, then, you know, that will prevent e5. But also the move d6 um, frees the bishop on c8. White will castle. And then there's sort of a fork in the road now. There's two main continuations from this point for the uh, Financhetto variation. Um, hopefully I'll be able to cover both. Um, where black plays knight on b the d7 in knight to uh, c6. So let's look at knight on b the d7 first. So actually, black plans on, um, when it places a uh, knight there, plans on playing c6. So obviously, if black plans on playing c6, it, is, it can't put its knight there. The play would continue. White develops the bishop, uh, the knight, sorry, the knight to c3. Obviously preparing e4. Black itself will play e5. And now white will play e4. So everyone is vying for central control. And um, black will play e6. Helping to um, control the square d. Um, d5, so if the pawns are exchanged off, obviously if um, black did not play c6, white could uh, put a like a knight on this square and uh, be very strongly posted there. White plays um, pawn to h3, sort of helping to control this g4 square so um, the knight doesn't come down here, but this does create a weakness over by the king. It sort of weakens the area over here. Black will play um, queen to uh, b6. So getting uh, sort of a gets queen over to the queen side. You know, obviously if the bishop move, potentially, you know, the pawn doesn't take. The queen's attacking, you know, the pawn here. So two main focus areas when the queen comes out to there. White will play the rook to e1. And now black will exchange off this pawn here. And white will recapture. So that does about for that one line of the feeling kiddo variation. And let me back up to where black played a knight on b the d7. So instead of knight on b the d7, black could play knight to c6. 
in this variation. Um, so with obviously some different plans, actually the plan will be to, for black will play its pawns like this. So let's see how this develops. Um, white will play knight to c3. Obviously, once again, preparing e4. Black plays a6 with the idea of um, playing b5. White plays h3 for similar reasons I just mentioned before, helping to control the g4 square. Black plays rook to b8. Well, this does support the, um, the move uh, before also black has to be careful about this diagonal here where this bishop sits because before when the bishop was um, when the rook was sitting over here on this square you know if the knight moved then and if this bishop moved then this pawn this b7 pawn is weak so just getting really helping the support. I see it as helping the support to move b5, but also getting, you know, or because this rook is was aiming right at it. We don't want any funny business. So e4 by white, and then b5 by black. And now um, white will push in the center. These pawns will get exchanged off. And now the queens will come off. And then black will move its um, knight back. So that about does it for the two variations of the Finninketo variation. Maybe just by word, I've now completed all the openings that I want to go through for sort of my lecture series. Um, I know I haven't covered all the various different openings There's, and all the variations. I've only covered try to hit the most popular openings and the popular or most played opening lines. So I haven't been able to cover everything. Maybe if I get to the end of, um, you know, there's supposed to be 12 lectures and there will be. After that, maybe I'll continue by looking at some of the other openings. Okay, so. That does it for the King's Ending Defense. And also for me covering the um, basic openings.